Howdy, folks. Um, I'm doing a video today um, about, a, about some reloading development work I've been doing, uh, specifically for anyone who's trying to um, reload some Lee uh, 9 millimeter round nose cast bullets. The actual uh, bullet is this. Um, if I can get it in camera. Hold on. There we go. It is a TL or tumble lube design Lee 356-124-2R. It is, um, it's, it's a 124 grain round nose profile tumble lube design. Uh, this is from a two cavity mold. Their six cavity mold does kind of the same thing. Same, it's just six, you know, instead of two. Um, the problem I was having beforehand, instead of just like looking at the uh, load data and just going at it and whatever, is the load data for this, well, not, you know, obviously the Hornady is only going to do Hornady bullets, but there's a similar profile, similar weight Hornady that says the case interval length is 1.150. And most of my 9 millimeters when I'm doing uh, in the past, just doing actual uh, Hornady bullets has always been 1.150, 1 1.140 1 for 115 grains. And the problem I was having is when I'm seeding these 9 millimeters to you know, the proper depth to the depth in this manual for uh, 124 grain. Uh, the case, as I found out, the case is not crimping um, properly uh, to the bullet. It's, it's writing over some of these grooves. So that's what I think I was finding was whenever it would, it would feed, it wouldn't feed all the way. Yeah, it was catching on this way in, which tells me there's a crimping problem. But I was crimping because I have a factory crimp die. Uh, so, the uh, eventually after doing some research, not a lot of good data that I found on this projectile loading it up, but thankfully there is a video by Elvis Ammo. Uh, he's a great guy. He has great stuff. Uh, talking about him, him developing his own loading with a different powder than me, uh, but he was seeding this projectile to 1.124 or something in that range. Mine's actually hitting somewhere around. 1.1305. Oh. Yeah, 1. Point, uh, you can't really see it, but yeah, 1.1305. 1. And, you know, that's what my stuff's all locked down to. I'm a horn of you back there. And I just got back from the range with some testing. So, um, so the, of course, in the first first part of the process that I do is I always make dummy rounds. No powder, no primer. Just a test fit. If it doesn't feed, there's no point reloading the, the bullet. Uh, so the first problem I had was, of course, uh, I bought the wrong sizing die. I bought a 357 uh, sizing die from Lee that was too wide. You know, it's, it didn't take enough off. So that was my first guess. Um, probably, I think the actual problem was a crimping problem with the seating depth, but to be honest with you, everyone's saying do 356 unless you really need a 357 with those bigger bore, uh, military style, kind of worn out nine millimeters. So I, this is size, these are size, the 356 with a least size of die, just so you know. Um, so yeah, no, I created some dummy rounds, didn't work, got stuck, had to use a wooden dowel rod to jam it out. Thankfully, I did that instead of loading up rounds. And then I bought the new 356. It took a while to come in because of the freezes. Uh, and then once that happened, that still didn't fix the problem per se. Uh, the, the, the shield 9mm that I'm using in the MPX wouldn't go into battery fully. Uh, so that was telling me that it wasn't the sizing of the bullet. It was the something else going on. Uh, so in Elvis Ammo's video that I was talking about, um, he mentioned seating it to such depth. And I... I typically, like I said, seat to a higher depth, you know, make it longer. Uh, and I was worried about over-pressurization. Pressure, but in so making it 1.130 or 1.120 or 4 or whatever in that range, it, the case mouth actually, uh, the definition on this for facing on my iPhone's camera is probably going to pick it up. Of course, the light in the background. These grooves on this are very shallow. Um, but you know, there's a, a up ridge or an up ridge, and then there's a lower ridge. Well, you want the case to crimp inside the first inner groove is what I found is what Elvis's case overall length was doing for me. Because whenever I did that, 
and I reset the the factory crimp die and uh, set it. You know, the you get it to uh, a certain point, and then you go from there with some turns. And no matter what I tried, either the the barely any crimp to a full turn or whatever the, the max recommended crimp was, they all seemed to work. They all passed my chamber check, my uh, my lineman gauge case gauge. And uh, they all seem to pretty much fit inside the it actually cycle in the, in the firearm. So that was good. So 1.130, uh, size of 3.56, that's our seating depth. That's our you know light cramp, whatever that works for you. Um, so that was kind of going the problems I was having. I finally, that's it's the setup here. Uh, I'm using Power Pistol. Uh, this is my preferred one I've been using since I started. Um, as well as I use CCI uh, small pistol primers, the number 500s. Yeah. Uh, I separated out my brass out by manufacturer. These, I want. I just want to make sure I didn't have any variances. It doesn't really matter with pistol stuff, but I wanted to remove as many variables as possible. So in this case, I tested everything with uh, uh, Winchester, uh, uh, Winchester cases. Got a Hornady AP back there uh, with uh, a Lee Sizer, uh, Hornady powder through expansion die, a Hornady powder cop, then Lee Cedar, Lee crimp die. Uh, yeah, five, sorry, wasn't counting my hand right. Um, so that that was all set up. That was, you know, once it locked down, it was good. Uh, I'm not getting any variance on that. That's not anything big deal. But if we look in our manual here for 120. I have a Lyman too, but the thing about Lyman is, Lyman I find is overzealous in their uh, in their minimum specification. Uh, when I did the 115, when back in, when I back when I started and did 115 grain uh, with power pistol, uh, it was a lot hotter. Their minimum load of whatever it was was a lot hotter than the Blazer brass everything else I was shooting out of my uh, gun. It just was noticeably different as far as recall everything else goes. So I, I, the goal of this is because I'm sitting, I'm seating the bullet a lot shallower, shallower or than what I even do 115 grains with to get it to actually crimp down properly. I wanted to start low work up, you know, of course the problem with that is if you start low, then you have a possibility of squib loads. Thankfully I didn't have any. I'm going to put some range video here at the end. Um, I'm going to try to, you can't hear me talk because all the gunfire in the mic, but I did try to commentate on the video. So anyway, uh, the thing about Hornady is, oh, I just lost my place. <laughs> Hold on, I'll jump cut it. And we're back. Yeah, sorry about that. So in Hornady, right, the uh, 124 grain uh, recommendation, of course, the whole point of this video is that you can't go off the Hornady manual, any of these manuals, because the data is not for the projectile uh, itself. And the seating depth, depth is shallower than the case over like there. So uh, the point I want to make is don't go off this manual, any of these manuals uh, directly. You want to, or even off my own stuff, you want to be very careful. Uh, but for the, the bare minimum here for Hornady, and Hornady is known for being very conservative in their their stuff. In this case, they really were, as I found out. I won't spoil the surprise just quite yet. But Power Pistol, they're wanting to start off at uh, 4.3, and they max out at 5.7. I don't have my glasses on. Uh, so my reasoning was, and of course their case overall length is 1.150, uh, but my reasoning was, because this is shallower, I want to go shallower. And so I came up with, you know, it's better if you don't do it this way, where you have, if you have different cases for different things, this is not, this is me not being a good example of people, uh, because if you don't properly do it, you could confuse things. But as you see here, I have these MTM 100 cases, and uh, some of these labels are real, irrelevant, because I didn't go out and do every one of these. Thankfully, I didn't, because it turns out that I really underestimated originally. Uh, so I, I thought to myself, okay, they're starting at 4.3. I'm, I'm going 300 or 200 under uh, their overall length. So I'll start at 3.5. So I have a, I had about 10 3.5 grains made. And then I decided eventually uh, 
24, 5 of 20, 4, 8 of 20, 4.8 grains, 20, you know, that's what I mean. And then 5 0, uh, I had five of them because, uh, thankfully, the powder cop, by the way. And what happened was I was doing the 5 0s before I went to the range, and my powder cop wasn't uh, going up after about five of these 5.9 grains. I think it got clogged up because it wasn't dropping powder or something. But I didn't have time to go deal with it because I wanted to go to the range before everyone else got there. So I didn't get to test the 5 O's that much. I didn't get to test them enough, though. Uh, but that's what it is, you know. Spoiler alert. 4.8 is my bare minimum um, for the shield and the MPX. They, to reliably work, uh, reliably cycle the action, reliably go on the battery, Reliably cock the striker slash hammer uh, to rely, you know, everything else. It's 4.8 grains of power pistol at this this setting. You know, five uh, O was um, it worked, and that I feel like I'm at the very bare minimum of the spectrum um, with this overall length of this bullet. Uh, I did I did maintain. Um, Pardon me. For these ones that actually worked, I did maintain uh, the cases so that I could look at the primers, case wear. Uh, there is absolutely no um, signs of pressure on these. So I'm feeling like I could go up to the max. I'm going to probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up. Um, next, I'm not going to go range anytime soon. I don't. May go next month, whatever. Uh, but I may. In developing this, go out there and develop a uh, up to 5.7 5 grains of power pistol and see how that works. Because it seems like I'm not even hitting the, uh, the, the, the wall just yet. So my fears, while irrational, were rational in that I didn't want to blow my hand up, you know, in my face, whatever. I was actually wearing glasses, by the way. Um, but turns out, good deal. Didn't have any squib loads. Um, that was good news. Uh, I don't have the picture of the target. I don't have the target because I wasn't testing for accuracy. I had it five feet in front of me because I wanted to see each bullet hole. Because I wanted to make sure every time I pulled the trigger and every time it went bang, there was a, uh, a hole because I didn't want to squib load. I also brought wooden dowel rods and a flashlight so that I could see the bore each time. Uh, and so I've had a squib load. That's why I have a powder cop now. And 45. And I tell you right now, if I didn't have that powder cop, <laughs> I would have had squip loads on those five oh the 5.0 grains, and that would not have been fun. So that powder cop saved save my butt, save my bacon, you know. Uh, invest in it. Invest in something similar to it. it, it it's definitely worth it. So anyway, uh, let's break it down by how the gun functioned on each different level uh, of powder. Uh, and, and of course, I didn't test each one of these with my NPX. I did with a shield because the shield is my disposable gun. Uh, I have two shields. I have a 45 shield and a 9mm shield. 9mm shield was bought used. It's used as my backup in case I blow my 45 shield up. Isn't that wonderful? I reload 45 as well. So, you know. Uh, but thankfully, uh, you know, while these didn't fun all function, at least they didn't get a slip up. Uh, so, like, sorry, I'm 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 rambling here. Uh, so, three five didn't cycle the action at all. Uh, it would go bang. It wouldn't even eject. Uh, four o, it would eject generally. Actually, yeah, it, it would it actually eject, but it wouldn't at all cock the the striker. So, it ejects. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, at 4 it would eject, but it wouldn't um, pick up a new round. So it wasn't going all the way back. It wasn't cycling the action enough to pick up a new round. Uh, so I kind of stopped that after two or three, after realizing it wasn't enough power to fully cycle the action. Um, I actually just suppose most of these rounds uh, were trashed, gone. You know, I didn't, I, you know, threw them away. Um, but, all right, 4 that was at 4-5. Um, those are four or five, it would cycle the action, eject, and pick up a new round each time. Um, but it would not 
always re-strike, re-cock the, the hammer, the, the striker in the gun. So basically, it would go bang, pull back, bring in a new one, and then click. No, there was no click, so that's the problem. There was no click because the striker wasn't fully cocked. So after a few of those, I mean, it would go every now and then, maybe whatever. I don't know the exact, but it, it, it was not enough to be comfortable. Uh, so I went to 4.8. Every one of those went bang. Every one of those ejected each, every time the, the striker was recocked. And so that's, like I said, that's my minimum load. Minimum load. Um, can't judge it for accuracy. 5.0, great. So if you're going with my stuff, start at 4.8. Um, again, that's your responsibility to make that call. So now I want to uh, get into the range video. And like I said, you really can't hear me, but uh, this is just some video. I'm probably going to cut a lot of it. Uh, so this is not a 30 minute long video. You can't hear me anyway. You can hear bangs, bang, 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 but not, uh, not this stuff. But I, what I want to bring, uh, show you in this video is kind of show you how I am doing, going about the low development, uh, making sure I'm test, I'm seeing stuff, doing it right. That I'm not just being a, being careless. You'll notice that I will shoot one uh, out of the mag and then and then try to find the case while it was still warm uh, so that I could look at the primer and look stress factors. It's kind of hard when you've got the, all the lanes are busy. Uh, so I try to keep the place clean, try to find the thing. If you notice me like drop it real quick and it's because I'm trying, I, I'm mentally seeing it go this way. I'm trying to calculate it in the mind. that's going to be, you know, over here. Um, so that I could go back and pick it up. You know, this is, I wanted to make sure I captured my nine millimeter project cases because at this range that I'm at, everyone's shooting nine millimeter, uh, except maybe a few 45s. Uh, I didn't want, I didn't want my cases being confused for someone else's. So anyway, uh, thank you for l listening to me ramble. And if you are in the market for loading these projectiles up, that's what I've got. I caution you to take care of yourself. Be careful. Uh, reloading is fun, uh, but it's dangerous. So thanks. Get them. I'm not wearing a ring. Sorry. Thank you.